Alright guys, today we're going to be working on some coil pots. So we're doing a little bit of clay. Move the clay off the way for a second. Alright, so let's talk coil pots. Now for this assignment, we're doing specifically a vase uh, with a Greek influence. So for your Greek influence, print off some, work, some uh, pictures here of some basic Greek vases. Notice how the majority of these vases uh, all have handles. Uh, there's only a couple that don't have handles. Now, on the handle thing, I'm going to go over that one very specifically in the way that I want you to construct that. So make sure that you guys are paying attention. Before you get started, always and uh, every time, always create a sketch for yourself before you start working on this. Now, for your design, your design should be of a vase. So I need a 3D design element. So I need to see a 3D structure on your vase design. Make sure you got some, some nice curvature, some contour line some illustration that shows me the depth of field so that I can see that's a three-dimensional object, something that can hold in my hand, not this uh, flat design that's on these pieces of paper. Make sure it's got some structure to it. Then on the handles, make sure that you have a very simplistic, this is where the handle attaches on one side and attaches the other side. If I can't see that it can attach in two places, I'm going to go ahead and say no, don't do it. Let's talk about some basics in clay. Now, so one of the number one simple basics that I need to stress on clay is this. As soon as it comes out of the plastic, this is a time bomb. And by the time bomb, what I'm talking about is the exposure to air is starting to dry this out. The more that I hold this in my hand, the heat from my hand is drying out the clay. And at one point, it will just be too dry to work with and I won't be able to work with it anymore, not be able to make anything uh, nice. So make sure that as you're working, that you take caution if you have plastic, uh, you can take put a piece of plastic on top of this to seal out air so that the air stays off of this so that it doesn't keep drying out. All right, now coil pot method. You're gonna first start, start off with a knob of clay. So take the clay in my hands. This one's a little tough. Not my super, super fresh stuff. Now notice what I'm doing is I'm working on a wooden board. The wooden board that I'm working on is just, it. It's better than using a laminate surface, which is what the tabletops are. Uh, and the reason that I use the wooden board is it doesn't stick to it. I can work on this much, much easier. So rolling this out into a nice snake. And notice how I'm rolling it out. I'm using the palm of my hand. I'm not using the fingertips at all. Now, once you get it to the correct size, what you're going to do is you're going to tip in the first end and cartwheel, cartwheel over on itself until you have a nice spiral design. Now, after you have the spiral design, come and take one of your tools. I'm gonna start by doing exit lines on top of it, hatching, cross hatching motion. Rotate. And then smooth. Reason I do that first is I'm, I'm taking all that clay and breaking it up into smaller pieces to where I can then smooth it out and get a really nice, even consistency, and I haven't altered the shape too much. If I just start smearing it back and forth, I can pull on the clay too much. It changes the base shape, and I don't have that nice, simple design that I started off with. All right, so I have a spiral on one side, and I have it flat on the other. If I have, if this is a sealed up piece, water's inside of here. Is water going to leak out of something that's completely sealed? No. The spiral side, if I left it like this and didn't not seal this, this will come apart in the, in the kiln. It will actually pop, uh, separate out, and I won't have a vessel that will hold something anymore. That's kind of the, the gist of why we want to seal these things up. All right, next. Now, for the coil pot method, you have two ways to do this. You can either, A, roll out a coil. I'm going to roll out two coils, so I can do this real quick. There's one coil. Take another knob of clay. Notice how I'm just taking a little bit at a time. Roll it down. Roll it out. All right. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my coil, I'm going to press it, and as I press onto this, what I'm doing with my hands is this. I'm taking, let's say here's my coil, and as I put it down, I'm taking on the inside portion of my piece and I'm pressing down the clay like this, just a little bit with my hand. So I'm just stomping it down on itself like this. So all of this is attaching to that base. So all I'm doing is I'm just saving a step and smoothing so that I don't have to worry about the piece coming apart in the build. Now, as it goes up, I'm staying on that inside track, If you, uh, just as we were doing if you watched another video where I was actually building the um, newspaper vase. There's one coil. Go ahead and just do this one real quick. <clears throat> in the newspaper vase, you came to the inside portion of your structure and you're building from the inside that way as you go up it stays inside and I'm stacking up on itself if I went to the outside it would go out in a in a open fan shape I want to try and keep a um, vertical structure on this one right now so as I'm coming up rolling it smashing it into that into that wall so that I can keep sure that my vase is going in the right direction at the top I'll go in and just manipulate just a little bit so I'm pinching and turning just a little bit with my hand now I got all those lines in there so I'm going to take my tool and smooth these out I'm smoothing around the inside of my vessel, taking care of all those little lines if you want to. Uh, some of you probably have a pl pink plastic knife or a clay tool that you can use to smear it with. I'm using my Fettling knife, which is what this tool is called. Now, do you have to use the object as it was intended the entire time? See, nice and smooth in there. No, taking my handle, I'm going to go in and I'm going to stomp on that bottom line. And that's going to seal in that bottom line so I make sure I have no leaks. So after this piece is fired, I can <clears throat> put water in it, use a little watering jug, water plants, do something cool with it. So smash it in. And then taking my finger, and I'm just going ahead and smearing the rest of that line. Just want to make sure that it, that line completely disappears. 100%. All right, now, let's set that to the side for just a second. I'm going to take some more clay, roll out a couple coils. Once you've rolled out a few coils, using the same technique as we did before where we were building the vase, I'm going to take and make little coils. And we'll go ahead and smooth these out. We'll go ahead and roll all four of them first. Now notice as, and hopefully you saw this, is that all four of these uh, coil, uh, coil bits that I started with are all the same size. That way all four of my pinwheels should be the same size as well. Kind of makes, it makes it a lot easier if you can kind of keep them all the same size for what we're about to do next. And last one. Now, p depending on what side is the one that you want to smooth, it depends on which one do you want to see on the outside. Because what we're going to use is we're going to leave one side of this nice and neat. So, I like the way this one looks better than this one. So, using my finger, just come stomp around. I've got my four pinwheels. I'm going to do one on one side, another one on another side. Next, and last. Now, using my tool, I'm going to push the two bits of clay together to seal it up there at the base. And then I'm also going to seal in between. The I just want to square up my 
pinwheels together and push the two clay pieces together. Now after you do that to all four sides, I would come back, take a little bitty knob of clay and put it over the hole and bring some of it up over that line. It's just going to act as another barrier. Now, because I'm adding this in and I'm not keeping to that coil section, it's fine. Just make sure that you are going in through and sealing everything properly so that you don't have any holes left in the overall piece. There's one. that one all the way around. Now because I have the hole up here as well I would have to fill in that hole with some additional clay and you can then also rotate between this and the pinwheel to get your shape up and that's perfectly fine. Just make sure that everything is sealed on the inside so that you have a proper design in your overall piece. Now I'm going to run through just the finish up bits to get the, your piece done and then we're going to go over how to do a handle. Once you have all the stuff on the inside sealed up, what you're going to do is you're going to take, let me set that to the side right now, take another knob of clay, okay? I would recommend using one coil only for what we're about to do. Roll out your coil, make sure everything is even on there. And then what I like to do is take your thing, fold it in half, pinch it back, Right there. Now I have two equal length pieces. Now for your handle, hold them out to the shape, like so, and set those over to the side. What we're going to do is we're going to let these firm up a little bit. We're going to let them dry out a little bit, so then when we attach them to the piece, they will hold their shape a little better. Okay, so once these have had some time to sit out, they should hold their shape, and what you're going to do is you're going to attach them on one side of the piece. Uh, now, I'm gonna try and put a little bit of this stuff out on each of the table. Now, what's in here? This is called slip. Slip is a watered down, basically it's some clay that we left in water for a while, so that becomes real pasty. And I'm gonna put a little bit of slip on each side of the piece. And then when I attach it, I'm gonna press in. I'm holding the, my finger on the inside so that as I smash, this side on this clay, I'm not breaking that wall. So I want to make sure that I have equal balance of where my clay is being pushed on both sides of my piece. There we go. Now, once you've attached both your handles, make sure that you go around each piece and seal all of these little cracks around the handle only, you just got to do it around the handle, because we sealed everything else, we're just affixing this handle to the exterior of our piece, making sure that it's properly sealed in, pro just nice and neat, so then you have a finished vessel. Now last thing but not least is this, make sure that you carve your initials into the bottom, nice and neat so that I can read them. Uh, I recommend, because we're doing a Greek slash Roman base, that you work on doing Greek slash Roman letters. which is just some simple lines, just like that. Once you've got your whole thing finished, make sure that all, everything is just sealed up properly, your area is clean, extra clay comes back to me, uh, or set it in a place where we can put it back in the bag so we can save it for later. All tools are rinsed and put in the appropriate location as well. Hope you had fun. Hey class, I hope that you liked that last video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe down there at the bottom. Now I'm gonna get back to uh, doing my thing, which is uh, working on my own stuff. So uh, don't forget to follow me on the web. I got a bunch of places you can find me, such as Pinterest, or no, not, not, not we're not doing Tumblr. Uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Group Me, that's a new one for me, and Steam, uh, and my personal favorite, YouTube. Check me out, like and subscribe. See you guys later, next class. Follow. See you later. Next class. Do your homework.